السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم my brothers my sisters we need to call out to Allah and the most important dua or supplication is اهدنا الصراط المستقيم guide us to the straight path Allah Almighty has made it compulsory upon every single one of us to repeat this particular supplication throughout the day in your five daily prayers you and I know the surah or the little portion of the Quran the chapter as it may be is called surah al-fatiha the opening surah of the Quran the first supplication that is made in that Quran Allah says, إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Guide us to the straight path. We are to repeat this supplication. That's what Allah wants. This goes to show us that the most important matter in existence is the issue of guidance. When you seek Allah's guidance genuinely, sincerely, He will not let you down. When you seek Allah's guidance and you really want to look for it and you are trying hard and you would like to search for that which is the most authentic, that which is the best, that which really would bring you towards the best relationship with your maker and you ask that to Allah, He will not let you down. He has never let someone down who's asked sincerely. And that's why we always say, pray for the purest preachings or teachings that have been brought to us as humankind. And in that way, you will always be able to be guided to the purest, cleanest and most correct teachings that have, brought, have been brought to us by humankind. Even those who follow the previous scriptures or the previous prophets, if they were to pray for guidance to the purest teachings of that particular prophet, they would end up worshipping the Almighty alone. Immediately after that, Allah Almighty says, in fact, before that, Allah says, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ You alone we worship, you alone we seek help from. And that is Allah. So after that, He says, إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Guide us to the straight path. Now, we need to know that Allah Almighty, His guidance is indeed a favor. If he's guided you to the, to the straight path and he's guided you to worshipping him alone, whoever made you, I put my head on the ground for him. I worship him alone. He's favoured you. He's really favoured you. Now, for us to call out to him and to worship him, he creates needs within our systems. Every human being, no matter what faith you belong to, will go through different needs, difficulty, hardship, issues, and so on. It is not just people of one faith. It is not just people of a certain part of the world, but everyone goes through challenges on different levels. But each one of them processes it differently. If you look at people who don't have faith, for example, they also blame something or someone. You look at people who have faith. If their faith is strong, it makes them closer to the Almighty. It helps them sail through the problems. Yes, maybe choppy waters. Your ship might be rocking a little bit here and there. Your boat is rocking, as they say. But you know that the Almighty is going to carry me through this. And there will come a day when ease shall come. So Allah Almighty wants to improve the quality of your living. Allah Almighty wants to improve the relationship you have with him. So he throws at you these curveballs. You need to call out to Allah, supplication. If Allah did not want you and I to call out to him, to make a dua, to supplicate to him, to cry to him, to ask him, he would not have created any needs, any difficulty or hardship. He would not have created any form of negativity at all. Rather, everything would have just been flowing. In that case, you may have forgotten the Almighty. So Allah says, you know what? We want to see, do you call out to us or do you call out to everyone else or anything else? So when you're making dua, when you're supplicating, you ask Allah, oh Allah, guide me to the straight path. Oh Allah, grant me. Oh Allah, protect me. And you need to make sure that you're asking with humility. You need to make sure you're asking someone whom you know owns it without a doubt. The Almighty created you from nothing in the same way He created the whole world from nothing. And thereafter, the different stages of your life have been perhaps through semen, then thereafter the embryo, the, the fetus and so on. And it grew in stages, different stages. But right at the beginning, there was nothing. Allah created even the soil through which He created us. So it's amazing how 
people ask those besides Allah for things they know that only Allah can give them. Now one might wonder, well, if it's something quite simple, I want to ask someone, please, can you go and collect something for me? Please, can you do this for me? Uh, please, can you, can you come here? I want to send you on an errand. Can you do me a favor? Well, if it is clearly physically in front of you and you know that Allah has given this person the power to actually achieve what you're asking them without a speck of doubt, then you may do so. For example, Allah has given someone the power and this is a simple example. Allah has given someone the power uh, to carry your bags and to bring them across. And you say, please give me a hand. It doesn't mean you've got to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, oh Allah, uh, take these bags for me from point A to point B. I'm just going to sit here because Allah says, we gave you the capacity. We gave someone around you the capacity, the capability, and you didn't seek help, for example. So that type of help is something that is apparent given by Allah. But all of that is given by Allah Almighty. We ask Allah Almighty's goodness and we ask Allah Almighty to have mercy on every single one of us. So remember, we call out to Allah, we make dua to him. This is the month of supplication. When you're calling out to Allah, don't just call for your needs alone. But remember, thank Allah for whatever he has given you. Be grateful, show gratitude, tell him not to take things away that he has blessed you with. So you're appreciating things. And then what you must do is you pray for yourself, you pray for others, you pray for the ummah, you pray for humanity at large. Guidance is a gift. Do you want it only for yourself or would you like it for everyone else? You want it for everyone else, pray for them. Oh Allah, guide this person. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, even prayed for his enemies. Some of the biggest and most staunch enemies, he prayed for them. He asked Allah to guide them. And guess what? Many of them were guided as a result of this wonderful, beautiful dua of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So we need to humble ourselves. Also, what we need to remember, do a good deed before you ask Allah something, an act of worship, an act of charity, some prayer, fasting, and so on. So in this beautiful month of Ramadan and Mondays and Thursdays out of Ramadan, the 13th, 14th, and 15th of the lunar month out of Ramadan, we know when people fast, they voluntary fast outside of Ramadan, as well as the, the, the compulsory fast in Ramadan, towards the end of the fast, you know, you ask Allah, and it is a sunnah, you may raise your hands when you're asking Allah. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, on some occasions raised his hands so high that you could actually see the whiteness of his armpits. And subhanAllah, it's amazing because he cried to Allah. He was the messenger of Allah. He called out to Allah so often. He sought the forgiveness of Allah so often. And he literally, he was the best of creation, the most noble of all prophets of Allah, but he did it for all of us to learn a lesson. So my brothers and sisters, don't be from among those who lets days pass and you haven't even made a dua. Be humble. Understand your total dependency on Allah. Wallahi, only what Allah wills shall happen. Wallahi, no one can ever harm you except if Allah has written it against you. And nobody can ever benefit you except if Allah has written it for you. Allah says that very clearly. So you call out to Allah, you ask him. A person may ask a question out of curiosity that if Allah already knows what's going to happen and what's he's going, what he's going to give us, What's the point of making dua? Well, you don't know, do you? The fact that Allah knows, he did not force it on you. You don't know. Allah knows, but you don't know. So you keep doing whatever he has made, uh, he has guided you towards and made easy for you to do and make dua that he makes easy for you that which is leading towards him and not away from him. That's very important. So you keep on calling out to Allah. You keep on asking Allah, even though Allah knows what the end is going to be, because if you didn't, then Allah would have known that you gave up and therefore you did not achieve something. So this is what you need to remember, because you don't know and Allah knows does not mean that you should give up. Rather, you don't know. So you should try your best and make sure that whatever is written, inshallah, it's going to be the best. I'm going to go to paradise by the will of Allah. I'm going to try my best. I'm going to seek forgiveness. I'm going to keep on calling out to Allah, not just for guidance, but guidance being the most important thing thereafter, all my needs. I first start with Allah. Let me give you another example. You go to the doctor and the doctor diagnoses you and says you need a procedure. 
Firstly, you before you go to the doctor, you call out to Allah. Oh Allah, I'm going to the doctor. Make it easy for me. Cure me. Let the doctor diagnose correctly. When you go to the doctor and the doctor diagnoses, it will be the help of Allah that will have guided the doctor to do the right thing. See, then when the doctor says a procedure is required, you ask Allah, Oh Allah, Oh Allah, guide the hand of this doctor so that the procedure can be fulfilled in the most correct way. And so, Allah guides that hand and so the procedure is successful. It was the supplication of Allah, the acceptance of Allah to guide the doctor to do the right thing. Ultimately, who was it? It was Allah. Allah gave the doctor the capacity, just like Allah gives you the capacity to stand up or to even watch this right now or listen to it. Subhanallah. My brothers, my sisters, many of us give up after we've called out to Allah. Remember, Allah Almighty does not want you to give up. What He wants from you, He says, you call out to me, I will give you either what you want as you want it. One of the ways of accepting the prayer. Or if I know that it's not good for you, I will give you something else in place of that. That's another way. Because you don't know what the future holds. You're asking Allah for something and He knows, hey, that's so bad for this person. He doesn't give it to you. Sometimes Allah delays what you want to the appropriate time in this world, or perhaps he will keep for you something amazing in the hereafter, or he may, you know, he may protect you from calamity that was coming in your direction as a result of the dua that you have made. So remember, keep making dua to Allah. Whether he is going to give you exactly what you want or not, leave it to him and trust Him and be happy with what He gives you as a result. That is the favor of Allah. Let's keep calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let's keep seeking His mercy and guidance. May Allah guide us all to the straight path. Ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Laylatul Qadri khayrun min alfi shahr